tents. The Bible tells us that he will do exceeding, abundant, above all we could ask or think, according to the power that is at work where? Within us. David was anointed, and with that anointing, the capacity to expand the kingdom was lengthened. It was greatened. It was increased. I believe that there is an anointing that the Lord has in reserve for the kingdom of God for these last days that he will bestow upon the church. I believe it's already here. I believe it is already accessible. I believe it is already available. But I do believe that God doesn't work for me. I work for him. And I believe there's a release of the anointing that's going to increase the capacity for you and I to function and live and operate in the kingdom of God. So I want to talk to you about that just a little bit this evening. As we entered in this, this, this vein of the supernatural of God, to see the Lord heal individuals when we pray, to see God deliver those who are in bondage, to see people that are at a place of, of ruin in their lives, see them be restored by God. I do know this. We cannot even begin to think that we can accomplish that without the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Now, I love the fact that David went out and he first off, he inquired of the Lord. There's an enemy that has encroached. They are there sitting outside my gates. Lord, do I go after them? And the Lord said, yes, doubtless, I will deliver them to you. I will say to you, as David is, is represents a man, as we are looking at him tonight, but also he, in many aspects, represents uh, the beloved king of kings and lord of lords. And I will declare to you tonight that every enemy of the cross, every enemy of the image of God the Father in our lives, the Lord God has delivered to his son, Jesus, and doubtless had delivered every enemy to him. We have victory in Christ. But he inquired. Sure enough, see, the Philistines came out, camped out for you and I, camped out against the church. Lord, will you deliver these enemies that come against your image by offering up other images? They got their images and their versions of what God should be like or what God should look like. As we see in the garden, the temptation was, oh, you'll be like God. But instead, what we got is now God is like us. We got in the fall of man this imagery conjured by the, 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 the vain imagination of fallen humanity. And now all of these idols are coming out. But what I see is the church arising to the day. And as they listened to the voice of God, and God said, yes, I want you to go. I want you to defeat. I want you to destroy the enemy who's brought his images out into the field of battle. And let me tell you, even though the enemy brought those images, and those images could be anything contrary to the very image of the Father, the Bible tells us that they were defeated and they left those images there. I don't know about you, but I have this yearning in my heart that the church uh, to look like Jesus. I've got this yearning in my heart that my children and my children's children uh, will dwarf anything and everything that I could have imagined uh, as a child of God. I've got this image uh, that there will be healthy, happy relationships uh, that are in covenant with the living God. I have this image that people will not identify themselves according to culture, but they will fall by the anointing of God in the field of battle on the cross, and they will rise up. The images in this world. The enemy has come out in unprecedented measures. But there is an anointing. There is an anointing. There is an anointed one. There is an anointed church. To say, no, no, no. We bear the image of our Father. 
we walk in the likeness of the Son. We have within us the Spirit of the living God who will defeat every dead God that you have conjured up in your mind. Whatever's been birthed out of hell is not going to make it into heaven. It'll be defeated on the grounds. And I believe, folks, that we are stepping into those days. So those images are left in the field. Now the audacity, the tenaciousness, the relentless pursuit of the enemy. See, they, they went out and they're coming against the giant killer. David defeated the giant, 1 Samuel 17. And now they are camped out in the valley of giants. But David's not alone now. Oh, no, he's got the armies of Israel and the mighty men that have risen up around him. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, the beloved living God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the champion, he ascended into heaven victorious over heaven or, or victorious over the earth and over hell all the dominion he rose a perfect human as a perfect representative of you and I but we rose with him and he put the champion spirit in our heart he didn't call us losers he didn't call us a, a sinner saved by grace. No, he calls us the righteousness of the Father. He has put upon us the breastplate of righteousness that protects the vital organs. He put upon us the helmet of salvation, gave us the sword of his spirit and the shield of faith. And now everywhere we go, we got these boots of the good news. So we carry the good news with us any and everywhere we go, telling the world you're bad news is bad but we've got some good news and his name is Jesus amen so go out into the battlefield in the valley of giants and the, the and David's got I got some giant killers with me they go out into the field but see David is not presumptuous because I love what the word of the Lord tells us and it's probably worth reading. Got a minute? Verse 12. So David knew. David knew the Lord had established him as king over Israel. That he exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people, Israel. He, being God, exalted his, being God's kingdom, for the sake of his people. What is the purpose of the anointing? Destroy the yoke of the enemy. What is the purpose of the anointing? Well, Jesus said, the spirit of the, the anointing is upon me that I may preach the good news. The anointing is upon me so that I can set at liberty those who have been bruised. I, the anointing is upon me so that I can declare the acceptable year of the Lord. The anointing is upon me so I can heal the brokenhearted. Now, why was Jesus anointed to do all of those things? And he made that declaration you will find in Luke 4 and 18. But what we see here is that David wasn't presumptuous. He understood the source of his strength. He understood the strength of his mind and where it came from. And so he inquired, Lord, the enemy is out there at my doorstep again. What do you want me to do? We, he, he wasn't presumptuous to say, just because God told me once doesn't mean he's going to tell me again. I'm going to make sure this is God. I'm going to make sure I enter in this ballot, into this fight again. He said, you're not going to face him head on. I want you to flank him. And I want you to run him out the same way he came in. But before you go out, I want you to wait. I want you to wait till you hear the sound. It wasn't just a gentle breeze. It was the roaring of the wind. As the Bible said, it's the marching on the tops 
of the mulberry trees. And the rabbis, the rabbis, they have understood that to mean that the angels marched on tops of the mulberry trees. In other words, the armies of the living God, the, or, the Lord of the host of the armies of Israel, the armies, the host of all the armies of heaven, they're marching on the tops of the mulberry trees, and it wasn't a gentle breeze. It was a blowing and a rushing mighty wind that blew in. And when you get the power of the wind blowing and you feel that, church, now you begin to move out against the enemy. Now, this is what's interesting to me. David defeated Israel, not Israel, the Philistines, in the first battle in the valley of Rephaim, the valley of giants. But then the enemy came back. And David didn't just defeat the enemy. Now he's driving the enemy away from him. Gibba was abbreviation for Gibeah. Gibeah to Gezer is about 40 miles. So David is not just going to let the enemy come encroach in around his house again. He said, no, by the strength that I have now, the anointing that is upon me now, I'm going to drive the enemy out. I believe, folks, it's time the church gets to the place where they decide, I need more than a victory. I need to live victorious. I need more than just, a, just one battle of, of, of victory. I need to drive this enemy away from my family. I need to drive this enemy of depression out of my yard, out of my house, down the street I need to drive it as far away from me that it can't get up and come back at any ease I need to push it on out so that it doesn't plague the next generation so I believe folks the anointing will increase our capacity we should never ever lose our dependency upon the anointing but I believe there's an anointing of the Holy Spirit in empowering for the church that has been there all along but I believe it's going to be realized in these days that we're living that we're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. That, that we're just uh, at a point in a place where it's, uh, okay, it, now it's time, to, it, it's time to have not just joy, but joy unspeakable. It's not just time to have uh, abundance, but exceeding abundance. It's time just not just to have enough, uh, but have more than, more than, more than enough. It's time that we start living uh, the, as the children that God uh, has intended for us to live. Bearing his image furthering his kingdom. But it's interesting to me. It's interesting to me that the anointing went searching for David. Jesse, are these all your boys? Well, no. I got one more. Where is he? He's out tending the sheep. None of you are going to sit down until he gets here. Go get him. Go get him. Go get him. The whole of creation is in turmoil, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, the weos, the fully mature. The ones that don't get their feelings hurt on Sunday and they're not back for six months. The ones that don't, uh, uh, they're not so much interested in the things that are going on around them as they are interested in what's going on inside of them and whether or not they are bearing the image of the Father. They're not so much worried about uh, uh, being offended. Uh, they're just more interested uh, in being an offense to the enemy and stepping out in power and authority of God. They're the weos. They're about the Father's business. They're, all, they're well beyond the place where they want the stuff of the Father. 
Father to absorb their own selfish ambitions. They're not pouting over because somebody else got something that they thought they deserved. Oh, no, no, no. They're interested in the Father's business. They're interested in what the Father is interested in. They want what the Father wants because they understand they're bearing the image of their Father. See, David, they said, we're not going to sit down. I believe that there is a restlessness in the world today. There is a, an anxious anticipation, a restlessness. You feel it in your heart, a restlessness waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. And there's a yearning in the, in the very heart of the church. And they're saying, I want to know you, Father, so that I may express your love to the world. I need to know you. I am hungry, Lord God. Lord, give me a taste of your glory. Give me a taste of your glory. I just want to walk in your image. They didn't sit down, and David came to the house. They anointed him. And David went from the anointing and ascended straight to the throne. No, it didn't happen that way. What happened to David? He went back to the field. How do you know? Because the Bible tells us that there was a young girl that or a servant, if you will, that was tending Saul and he was needing some relief from the torment and the torture. He was needing some anointed worshiper. I seen a boy. I seen a man. Or just he's he's out in the field. So they went and got him and brought him in there and he would play as a minstrel before King Saul and he was his spirit was soothed. But then, folks, uh, he rose that day, uh, and because of the anointing, uh, he slew the bear in the line. Uh, because of the anointing uh, and the empowering of the Holy Spirit, uh, he stood against Goliath, uh, and he defeated Goliath. Uh, and now he became servant to the one who hated him and wanted to kill him. And he did that, some believe, for seven years. But when Saul was taken out, David didn't say, I'm, uh, I need to tell y'all something. I've been anointing. Just let you know. It's here. It's on me. Can you smell the, the fragrant oil? It's here. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm all of that. I, I got it together. I, I've been out. I've been serving. I, I, sh- come on. See me. See me. He didn't do it. They came and got him. They said, we're going to anoint you. Now he's anointed over Judah. And then, seven and a half years later, after the one that replaced Saul died, now all of Israel came. David didn't say, well, you know, I've been doing a good job over here with these two. I think maybe I'm ready for the 12. He didn't go looking for it. He didn't go promoting. He didn't go. No, he waited upon the Lord. And the Lord said, now, David, it's been a little while, but now you're going to step in exponentially to the place, and you're going to further my kingdom, and you're going to cause my kingdom to grow and to prosper, and you're going to defeat the enemies. And let me tell you this. God has chosen You did not choose God. I want to tell you something the Lord told me to tell you today. It doesn't matter the voices that you've heard in your past. It doesn't matter what you feel in your heart at this moment. Pray, Holy Spirit, you reveal this. You, this is what he told me, you are a part of the master's plan. And stop a minute. Think about this. 
You might have been born in a place. You might have gone through some stuff. You might have decided that it's no longer a part of your makeup. But you are a part of the Master's divine plan. Does that not change everything? Does it not realign your thoughts? Does it not arrest your heart and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Those images that have been coming against me that are contrary to the image of God, the anointing is rising up in me and those images will be defeated at Calvary because Jesus Christ has already won the battle over Satan, over sin, and he has given me the ability to overcome self. But now I understand this is not my call, it's his. And he is the one who has chosen me. I didn't choose him. I wouldn't know how to choose him. I wouldn't know how to find God. He was never lost. I was the one that was lost. And he found me in the muck and the mire. He found me in the pit. He found me in the gross darkness. He found me in the insecurity and the self-hatred and the addiction and all of the things that would heap upon my, my wretched soul. And he said, oh, son, don't worry. I'll get you cleaned up. And he reached his passionate, loving, heart-filled hand and he pulled me out by the blood of the Lamb and he set my feet upon a rock that I may stand. Don't tell me that God wants your body hurting. Don't tell me that God wants you defeated. Don't tell me that God wants the church living in a place in defeat. You are his. And he is mine. Oh, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus. I hadn't even got to the message yet. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Go ahead and stand. Go ahead and stand. We're going to move because God's moving. We're going to move. We're going to. Hallelujah. 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 Folks, this is how the capacity, this is how we, this is how we, in, the, the kingdom is, is furthered. This is how our capacity increases. It's by revelation. It's by revel. It's not information. It's by revelation. God begins to reveal who we are in him. The Lord has instructed me that I need to bear the image of the Father that they may see the Father and the love of the Father. The Father has been defamed for too long. When Jesus said, you see me, you have seen the Father. He is my Father and he is your Father. And the enemy has made you think that he is uh, some weird, uh, duplicit individual who wants to kill you one minute and rescue you the next. No, if you've seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. And the Father expresses his love through the sacrifice of his Son. It is the Lord who gave his Son so that he would bring Bring us into adoption. His intent wasn't just to rescue us from sin, but to live in eternal relationship with us. It's his love. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Do you believe that it is our Father's will that our bodies be enwrapped in pain? That our relationships are destroyed. No. 
If you've got a need in your body, come down here right now. Come down here right now. Say, God, I, I've got a need. I need God for you to heal me. If you've got a need in a relationship, I want you to come and just begin to surrender to God. If you've got a need right now, if there's a pain in your body, we're going, we're going to pray. We're going to believe. We're going to say, God, your will be done. Your will be done. I need some worshipers. Come help me. I need some prayer warriors. Come on, let them. Everybody is. Many as need come down. If you're being prayed for and you're on the worship team, that's all right. We'll try to get to you first. Anybody else that wants to come down and help us pray, come ahead. Come ahead. Come ahead. If you want to help pray, see that above. Come on, Liz, come help me pray. Liz, come help me. See that above. Ribo sombra kiribro sonda rebaka. Elijah, just begin to play whatever's on your heart right now. When we pray, you just believe, folks. Lord, thy will be done. Thy will be done in my body as it is in heaven. I am yours and you are mine. I am yours and you are mine. Father, you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing, Lord, in heaven and on earth. Lord, you did not, re you did not withhold any good thing, Lord God, from us. You gave us your son, Father. Oh, merciful God, but he Yeah. 